This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy, and you're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our first guest today is Dr. Lance Casaza, author and motivational speaker. Welcome to the show, Lance. I appreciate you having me. So I want to give everybody some background on Dr. Lance Casaza. In 2001, he graduated valedictorian of his class and president of his college. After securing a loan from his parents, he opened his practice in June of 2002. And four years later, he was trying to find a way to tell them he could not pay them back. Confused, lost, and desperate, he turned to coaching and he turned his life around. It was during this journey of self-development that he pledged to share the knowledge he attained with as many people as possible. He now runs one of the most successful chiropractic practices in the country and has written multiple books, including Be the Hammer, Not the Nail, and his more recent book, Habits and Attitudes. He serves individuals through personal development as the president of EQ Coaching, while he relishes the opportunity to teach what he's learned, he's humbled by the understanding that the road to success is always under construction. So tell us about your new book, Habits and Attitudes. What is it about? Well, what I've, what I've learned through um, you know, reading all the books and listening to all the tapes and hearing all the speakers is that it's, it's relatively kind of the same thing. I mean, you know, everything that, that they talk about is kind of in the same general idea. And what I've noticed the struggle I have was getting people just to do anything. So I've tried to always make it as easy as possible. In the first book I wrote, there's a one page sheet that people do every 30 days. And I figured if you won't do that, you probably won't do a lot. And so with the habits and attitudes book, I figured, okay, you know, there's still some coaching clients I have and people I know that, you know, aren't doing the things they should be doing. So I figured, what if I took and compiled a group of really successful people and gave them kind of a, a template to fill out and um, kind of ask them certain questions like what, who, you know, who are they? What are their habits? What are their attitudes? Then they get kind of a closing parting shot, I call it in the book. So I figured what my goal for the book was if people continually found out that people did certain things that were successful, they might flip a switch in their own head going, maybe I should start doing some of these things because I'm not where I want to be and I'm not doing what these successful people are doing. And it's not success based on you know, money or anything. I think if you look at the individuals in the book, while I'm sure most of them do well financially, there's almost no, no talk of money or anything monetary or property in the book. So it's so interesting. I just had a talk with a real estate agent yesterday and we were talking about like he's tripled his business every year for the last two years and he plans on tripling it again this year. And I said, what's the difference? And he said, I started adopting good habits. And we had this whole conversation, like, for example, that one of my habits is instead of listening to music in the car, I always listen to self-help or some sort of book. So I'm always learning something instead of watching TV at night, I'll read a book. What are some of the little teeny habits that you think somebody could listening right now, a small tweak they could make to have a massive impact in their life? Oh God. Um, it's funny you say that because what I continually hear from people that don't do this kind of stuff is, um, they don't have time mm -hmm. or they just kind of don't believe in that kind of stuff. So you could not believe in gravity, but it does exist. Right. And this stuff does work. And so the time thing I think is the one that people have to get over the most. Um, and what I would suggest, which is uh, when I tell people this, when my coaching clients start with me, they turn their TV off for 30 days. Hmm. Um, and when I first did that, when I was getting coached, I was literally bored. I mean, I was looking around the house for things to do because yeah. I just, it was, so I started reading because there was nothing, I didn't have anything to watch. Right. So the average person watches six hours of TV a day. I, I, when I tell people that, they don't believe me because they start wondering, how is that even possible? Right. You know what I mean? But 
So if you literally just were to turn your TV off, you would have to replace that TV time with things to do. And so hopefully you would start listening to CDs or you would start reading, you know, good books yeah. or things like that. But that is, that is a simple one. The other one that probably is the most common in the book and is probably the most important in my opinion is what do people do when they start their morning? The first thing they do, I ask people this and they can't, they don't, they do it. And they don't even know it. They do it. Mm-hmm. They press the magic button on their phone. They press that button on their phone and they get an alert and it says, you know, 15 killed in Paris. And that's how you start your day. Right. You've got to be kidding. Me. You got to, you yeah. got to be kidding me. So what I have by my side is I have a list of like a little gratitude list and I just read through it. I mean, I've got it memorized now, my health, you know, um, my office, my mm-hmm. play, running water, you know, just things like that. So if you start the day giving gratitude, I use the term two arms, two legs. When people ask me, like, you're always in a good mood. How's that possible? I have two arms and two legs. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people don't. I mean, it's kind of simple, but so TV off and a gratitude list. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's where I would start. And anybody, there's you don't need anybody to do that. In fact, if you turn your TV off, you're going to save yourself money. Yes, absolutely. I think it's like mind shift too. So, for example, like the simple shift of having positive self talk. I will say one thing that has had a massive impact in my life, and this is going back many years. I had read um, Sh- Ch- Shad Helmstetter, What You Say When You Talk to Yourself, and mm-hmm. like just the mind shift of telling yourself every day when you wake up. I used to be that person that said, I have no idea how I'm going to get it all done today. There's not enough time. Now I wake up every day and I say there's more than enough time to get everything done today. And guess what? I always get everything done. So it's just mind well- shift. When I do when I do talks, the first thing I do uh, to set things up is I ask people to hold their goals up. Now mm-hmm. I have my goals in my wallet all the time. It's on my fridge. I always have it on me. I believe physically having it on me makes a difference. But anyway, I go to uh, talk and I say, "Hold your goals up really, really quick for me." And people literally start looking at each other like they had an assignment, or were we supposed to bring this, or mm-hmm. you know, so. Most of them don't have them written, and I know none of them have it on them, so it sets up perfectly for me. And I tell me, let me step back. Whose goal was it to make it through the day yesterday? And then a bunch of people laugh and raise their hands because that's how people get up. That's the goal they set. I just need to get through the day. And congratulations. They've been hitting that goal every day. So why don't we raise the bar a little bit, you know, and put some things down. And and so they don't even realize it's literally – a bunch of does the whole this whole genre is does and when you tell people they just they feel idiotic because they all there's no secret mm-hmm. it's just doing it and that's where it comes back to this habits and attitudes book and all the books and all these guys and all these gals that do these talks is just trying to resonate with you in a way that you'll do it and some people do and some people don't and you just have to find the people that that you get or that works for you. Right. How many of your clients never turn the TV back on again or limit it to some degree? I would say a really good amount because see, when I, it's, it, it, I ha, I'm actually shocked. At, at, you know, when you start doing coaching, you, you kind of not sure if you can coach, you can be a great athlete, and not coach athletes, you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, even though I did this good as a client, when I was a client, I'm still a client. I still have my own coach. But when I was doing this, I was wondering if I could, if I could do it. And I know I can now because I see the results. But I have them fill out a, a sheet every month, and we see what's working, what's not working. And based on that sheet, I can tell exactly if they're reading or not reading, if they're doing their morning ritual or not, if they're watching TV or not. And see, so your brain is a computer. Okay, whatever you put in, your computer comes out. It's, it's really as simple as that. So garbage in, garbage out. So I just – first thing I tell people – like people that read the newspaper, I tell them, why do you read that? And they're like, well, I need to know what's going on. You know, if something's going on, you need to know. People love telling people bad crap that's going on. You don't need to read the newspaper to find that out. So I would say a lot of my clients really don't go back. You know, the only ones that I would say do um, watch sports. And I give them a little bit of a pass on that because I feel like that's people achieving goals, striving to do stuff. So I think – you know, that one I'll, I'll give them a little window on, and maybe because I'm a past, past athlete, I don't want to be a phony on it. But um, most of them don't really miss it, quite honestly. So it seems like this Habits and Attitudes, the book, 
it is resonating with people. So what is it that makes your book unique from all the other self-help books that are out there? I, I, I read a lot. So mm-hmm. I read, I, my goal is to read a minimum two books a month. And I do that pretty easily. So, but what I notice I do, which is kind of weird to me, is that it's not that I don't enjoy reading, but when I read, I look at how long the chapter is because I want to know how much I'm reading. So I kind of, it's like a clock. And so I, I don't know why I do that, but I'm glad when I get done with the chapter. And I, I don't know why my brain works that way. So I think a lot of people don't read books because they are too thick or they're too this or they're too that. So I think what is nice about this book, so when I did, and I don't know, there's all these little hidden things that I do that I think are kind of cutesy and maybe they don't make a difference. But like in the Be the Hammer, Not the Nail book, there's 110 tools, you know, for life. Wow. So I thought, okay, give 110%, hmm. blah, 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 blah. And so in the Habits and Attitudes book, there's 52 um, people in the book that have uh, that are profiled. Mm-hmm. So what I had hoped is if you have a real challenge with reading, I mean, people, when I got out of, out of school, I said I was never reading another book again. Mm-hmm. And it really did me a disservice. So I think what is nice about this book is you could read just a person a day or even a person a week um, and just get in the habit of reading. But if you just even read a person a day, right. um, you'd be done with the book in you know a month and a half. And on top of that, it's only a couple pages per person. So I think you could read it maybe try to apply something from that person. So I think it's just, it's more chewable for people that are overwhelmed. That's why I think they don't, they don't do CDs and tapes and books because after right. the kids are in bed and you worked all day and it's nine o'clock, you're not going to put a, you know, you're not going to put an audio in. You're not going to read 50 pages. So right. if it's something where you can just get a little bit out a day and just start blowing on that ember a little bit, I think you can, you can get something out of it. That's what I thought. What changed, because re- I didn't read for a long time, and Stacy actually got me back into it, and she was the one that suggested trying to read in the morning instead of at night, and it made all the difference for me, because I just, at night, uh, something always came up. In the morning, if you start your day that way, <clears throat> if you get up a little earlier, there's really nothing to get in your way or stop you from doing it. Well, when I, see, I was, when I got, see, I was, I was at the end of my rope. I'd wanted to be a chiropractor since I was 2015. And I, you know, I went to chiropractic school. I did very well. And I, you know, I appreciate the intro. I was valedictorian. I was president of my class and it meant absolutely nothing. If anything, it probably hurt me. You know, grades mean absolutely nothing for success. It's the biggest farce. A third of the billionaires and millionaires in this country, uh, which is not the only way to rate success, but they never even graduated high school. So, um, but I was, so when I got, when I got under coaching, I was at the end of my rope. So when the coach said, I want you to read this book, um, I was going to do, I made a decision cause it was expensive. My coach mm-hmm. is really, really expensive. And so when you pay for an expensive coach, you're going to do everything they tell you to do because you're paying so much money and you're already in a bad hole. But the first book I read was, um, uh, the monk who sold his Ferrari by Sharma. Oh, I read that. And after I, <laughs> it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, um, after I read it, I was like, damn it, where is all this stuff? I didn't even know this stuff kind of really existed. And I always thought I didn't need it because I was president of my college, the auditorium of my class. I was, you know, I wanted to be a chiropractor since I was 15. So what I did was I became what's called an unlearner. I just, I had it all figured out and I didn't need to hear it from anybody else. So that book really, once I read that, that's when things kind of steamrolled. And so I think you just need to find that one book. And, you know, there's a ton of them out there. I mean, I, I have a list that I give my clients, but there's always not any of them you can, I've never read one where I wasn't like, I didn't get one thing out of, right. you know what I mean? I just, um, you know, I think the, there's a four agreements I read and it's be impeccable with your word. I remember, mm-hmm. you know, just things like that, where you just take one thing and just keep putting those bricks together right. and eventually you kind of build something. At least that's how I use them. So that's amazing. So we only have a couple minutes left. We talked about habits, but the book is Habits and Attitudes. Is there something you could say with all the people that you've interviewed? Is there something like a common thread that you found with high performers or successful people as far as their attitude goes? I would, you know, I would say easily, hands down, no questions asked. And it's it's kind of 
you know, I hate, I kind of hate the phrase, you know, the attitude of gratitude, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it sounds kind of mamby pamby, I have to admit, but it, all these people, I would say 90, and I know they all are, but I would say almost all of them, literally almost a hundred percent, they all talk about gratitude, all being grateful for where they are, all being grateful for what they have. And in some fashion, they celebrate that either with a gratitude list or this, that, or the other thing. And, and I think, you know, when you keep comparing, there's always somebody that's got more money. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always somebody that's got more of this or that or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so you just forget. I mean, the, the gratitude thing, when I didn't have a walk-in closet, that's all I wanted. Then mm -hmm. I got it and I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. When I didn't have a washer and dryer, that's all I wanted. I got it. I forgot about it. So if you remember these things that you wanted so bad and got, it just puts you on a different plane. And I would say that's where, that's where all these people are locked in easily. Their habits come eventually, I think, because of their attitude. And their attitude is set with a foundation of just being grateful. And they almost all have either lists or journals or they read they, all of them. That is easily the binding force between all these people. Hmm. Wow. Great stuff. Hmm. So this is Dr. Lance Casaza. His book is Habits and Attitudes. Where can people pick up the book or learn more about your coaching? Well, I'm, I appreciate you asking. It is on Amazon. It's also on Kindle, so you can make your life very easy by doing that. My first book, it was weird, 2010, wasn't even really, Kindle stuff wasn't really happening back then. But now I've got it without it. It has made life that much easier. My... Um, Coaching website is eqcoaching.life. We've got a really cool event um, going on in Cabo in January of 2018 with 12 speakers. Um, you fly down on a Thursday, and it's a nice balance of speakers and, um, and uh, relaxation. You come home on a Monday. So uh, if I had to plug anything, that's probably the thing I would like to, uh, to get out there. Awesome. Great stuff. Habits and Attitudes, Dr. Lance Casaza eqcoaching.life. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Lance. I, I cannot thank you enough. I really, really, really appreciate it. Great. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.